last time we we started the study of zero sum games and uh, these were games involving two players with finitely many strategies for each player and we said that they can be represented in this sort of form now a zero sum game had the property that the payoffs of the players sum to zero so as a result you could represent the uh, the, the the game using only one uh, set of payoffs and that was represented in a matrix form so a zero sum game was uh, represented using a matrix a where the rows of the uh, of the matrix were the strategies of player 1 and the columns of the matrix were the strategies of player 2 and player 1 seek to find the least value in the matrix he wanted the least value so he was the minimizing player minimizing player and player 2 was the maximizing player and what did we uh, we we introduced something called as a a security strategy for for the players so the security strategy is the strategy security strategy for the row player security strategy for the row player is a was a row i star such that to take the maximum damage that he could have, he could get under I when he plays I star. This was better than what he could get from any other row. Okay, so I star was a row that satisfied this. Similarly, uh, for the column player, we had a security strategy J star which is defined with the property that the minimum again the maximum damage that he could get which is the minimum over i uh, of i j star this was greater than equal to the minimum over i of a i j for all j and the significance that i said of of security strategies was that the security strategies basically bounded the payoff that a player uh, bounded the loss that a player could incur. In other words, that if if the player if the row player played I star, then the worst case payoff that he could get is this was this number here, and this was called if you recall this was called the security level. The worst case payoff that he could get was this security level. The and and the reason for that was because if the the worst case payoff that he would get is uh, would be if the column player played the j that max that maximized a i j star and but if the column player played any other j okay then he then the 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 row player the the row player would uh, always be better off because this was the maximum and he uh, and he was looking for he the row player is looking for the least possible value in the matrix any other strategy j that the column player played was always beneficial for the row player. So, in particular, so the security strategies satisfy this particular property that if you take look at the max over j of a i star j, this is always greater than equal to a i star j for all j. Right. So, what is this here? This term is the is what the uh, what the row player's objective and the column player plays j. So, when the column player plays any j, what the row player can get is only better than the left hand side here, which is his security level. So, the security strategy basically guarantees him a certain level of his objective that he can he can always get a number lower than this particular number. So, that is why we denoted this by a notation called v upper bar. The upper bar of A was the min over i max over j of A i j and similarly there was an analogous one for the column player also that was the column, uh, for the column player we had that the min over min over i i j star this was always less than equal 
this was always less than equal to a i j star for all i which means if the row player played any strategy he was guaranteed the column player was guaranteed to get a payoff greater than equal to this the the left hand side security level payoff so in other words if these if the row player and column player uh, play i star and j star then they are guaranteed to receive a payoff better than the that defined through these security levels okay. so that was what we discussed last time and then we discussed something about saddle points which i will come to in a moment but what i want to do now for the uh, for a little while is to also give you another interpretation of the significance of 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 security strategies and security levels okay. so presently we have been assuming that the players are playing simultaneously so there is no communication between the players and there is uh, the the other player is not aware of the that what the uh, uh, what a player what his opponent has played okay but now suppose there is a definite order of play okay suppose there is a definite order of play suppose player 1 plays first and then player 2 observes his action observes player 1's action and then responds to that okay so player 1 plays chooses a row player 2 gets to see what that row is and then decide what column he should be playing if there is such a definite order of play then what what should the players play okay why is that why would the first one play why would the row player play his security strategy right so so notice this see basically now suppose the row player plays suppose so suppose p1 plays first and he picks say a row i okay. now this row i is played by player 1 player 2 can now observe that row i has been played so what are the choices for uh, for player 2 he has to pick a column all right but his his payoff is now very well defined because he knows that it's going to be one of i a i j where i has already been declared to him right so i is known so he has to look over the columns and says okay which which is the which is the column that gives me the best payoff right so that column player will player 2 will respond with will respond with j such that so j the j that maximizes basically with j that maximizes a i j with i known remember with i known okay so player 2 will now pick the j that maximizes a i j with, with i known all right so in other words player 2 is going to just maximize a i j now this is what happens when player 1 plays a row i but player 1 knows that this is how what is going to happen because player 2 is going to be maximizing a i j so he can now choose his row i so that in anticipation of what happen what is going to happen right in anticipation of how player 2 is going to respond so if if he plays row, then what row should he be playing in that case he should be playing the row i which minimizes this particular term which minimizes this term right so he should choose the row i star such that it minimizes the max over j of a i j so in other words i this another interpretation for the security strategy is that the it is the strategy that the player would have played if he was playing first Okay, if the row player was playing first, it would he would have played I star. If the column player was playing first, he would have played his corresponding strat security strategy J star. Okay, now, yeah. No, no. So player one 
is going to play first. Okay, so he declares his i. Player two responds to that with a j, right? Now knowing that this is going to be the response, he can choose bi. So he minimizes the prospective response that will come up after he chooses the i. Okay. Now if you if this was in fact the game, right? If this was in fact the game that player one was supposed to play first, follow, and then player two was going to has to follow, then this is in fact the solution. There is not there is not not much uh, else left to do as far as solving the game is concerned. So in fact, the security strategy is the strategy to play if there was a definite order of play. Okay, the sec the the uh, the solution of the game would be that the player playing first plays a security strategy, and the other player just responds to that. Yes. No. Yeah, player. Uh, even if uh, whatever uh, play, player two already knows that player one is rational. Okay, so that uh, or okay, even if you assume that, uh, does it? It makes no difference because eventually player two has has this is what is called a faith accompli. Basically, his his options are locked once player one has already declared his strategy. Player two has to basically pick the column that um, that gives him the best payoff in that row. That's it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so the security strategy therefore can be interpreted as the right solution for a game where the play was sequential. Okay. We will talk more about sequential play much later in the game. But as you, uh, right now we are, uh, this is just uh, more as an artifact for interpreting security strategies. That security strategy is the right strategy you would have played if the game was sequential. Okay. And uh, and with and if there was a predefined uh, definite order of play, what this also means is that it is a strategy in which if the player played in a uh, in why, why am I saying that this is in fact the the right solution for this uh, this problem? It is you can think of it this way that if player player uh, one plays I star, okay, then he is guaranteed that he will not come back with any regret. He plays I star. He is uh, player uh, uh, player two will then respond with a with a column that maximizes this box term here. Player two will respond with a column that maximizes this uh, this term with I equal to I star. And therefore, then in uh, the uh, you know given that that is how player uh, two was going to respond, it makes sense that player one just picks I the I star that minimizes this. If he had picked any other i, i, not i star, then he would have in could have in hindsight regretted that I could have actually knowing that this is what player two was going to respond with, I could have played played differently, right? So, so in other words, the this is the right solution concept because there is exposed after the game after play has played out, there is nothing for the player to, there is no uh, nothing for the player to say that he could have done better, right? Now, if there is no definite order of play, right? This this situation changes. So let's let's do an example. Okay. So so let us say, for example, uh, consider this. So this is player two. This is player one. Matrix is 4, 0, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 3, 1, 2, 1. Okay. Can you find the upper and lower security levels? What is V upper bar? And what are the security strategies for the two players? What is V upper bar here? So, how do I how do you find V upper bar? You have to max look for the maximum over the column in every row and look for the row that gives you the least value of this maximum. Okay, So, let us just do that. Look at the maximum over over the columns in this row. What is that? That is here. That in this case it is 4. I will just write it here. So, I am right what I am writing here is the max the max over this uh, over the columns in each row. Okay max over columns. 
So, this is 4. What about the second row? What is the maximum over the columns? It is 3. What about the third row? The max over the columns is 2. Okay. And now you look for the minimum of these green numbers. So, this is going to be equal to 2. Okay. What is V under bar? V under bar, what I need to do is take the minimum over the rows in each column. Okay. So, in this column, now what is the minimum over these over the rows here? First column 0, second column minus 1, third column minus 1 and then look at the maximum out of these okay, which then gives me 0. Okay. And what are the security strategies? It is easy to see actually what the security strategies are. The What is the security strategy for the for the row player? What should we, what is the strategy that gives him uh, this security level? Third row, row 3 and what about column, what about for the column player? Column 1. Right. Suppose now there is no definite order of play and the players play actually these two strategies I star and J star. Okay. Now, what would happen if player, player let us say let us take it from the play, uh, player 1's point of view. What happens if player 1 chooses I star? A, a, that means row 3. What, what, what does the column, what does the column player play? Column player would play to, uh, would play column 2. Right, but if column player was playing column two, what would row, what would the row player have played? Row two, right? Not row three, right? So, likewise, let's think of it. Think about it from the column player's point of view. Column player, J, the security strategy is suggesting him to play J star equal to one, which is column one. Okay, if he plays column one, player one would have would respond with with row 2 which is 0, we would get 0 right with row 2. But if player 1 was indeed playing row 2, if player 1 was indeed playing row 2, what would column, what would the column player respond with? Column player would respond with column 3 right. So, another way to think about it is suppose the row player plays I, row i star thinking that the column player is going to do the worst. Column player is think, plays rows J star thinking that the row player is going to do the worst, worst possible damage, right. But uh, the worst possible damage to I star is not J star, right. So, what is the worst possible damage to I star? It is column 2, right. If column, so if player 1 had chosen, uh, if these two players had chosen I star and J star and played this way each has a reason to regret that they would each think that Are, if I knew that this guy was going to play J star I would have played differently. So, if if column 1 if player 1 would have yeah, if the if the column player had played J star player 2 would not have played I star right player 2 would have played row 2 uh, sorry player 1 would have played row 2 not not row 3. Right. If likewise, if player player one is playing row i star, which is row three, column player would not have played, uh, could not have played column one. He would have played column two. Right. So, in other words, if this, if you think of this as i an i star j star comprising of security strategies, just a pair of security strategies as a solution, it is not satisfactory simply because there is a reason to for to regret after the game. Right, which means that there is somewhere you feel that the 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 uh, the reasoning process that the players have put put in has not has not given you an uh, you know a satisfactory conclusion. There is something for each player to get could that they each think could have they could have done better, given uh, you know given the circumstances. So which means that there is now the reason this has happened in this particular example is because your v upper bar is not equal to v lower bar. Now that brings me to the other theorem that we proved last time. What did we what did we conclude last time? We conclude that, concluded that if v upper bar is equal to v lower bar, okay, then then there exists a saddle point. What is the saddle point? 
The saddle point is saddle. So, what is the saddle point? The saddle point is a pair of strategies I star J star such that A i J star. So, A i star, if you look at it from the point of view of player i. Uh, so, uh, from the point of view of play, the row player, uh, the, the row player is better off playing i star in response to j star ok and the column player is better off playing j star in response to i star ok. So, if v upper bar is equal to v lower bar then there exists a saddle point in and in that once there exists a saddle point the kind of regret that we just saw above does not exist right. Now, Moreover, so but but there is a slight catch here, which and so this is for all i and for all j. So uh, so there is a slight catch. I said i star j star is a saddle point, but what is the guarantee that this saddle point is in fact the same as the same i star j star for say that we wrote above for security strategies, right? Because I was talking of regret from sec in in terms of security strategies, but you can but actually the uh, so but what's uh, what's what is very nice is actually that the saddle point in fact comprises of security strategies. So, and in fact, the converse is so. This is what we showed, and actually, if you see, if you see the proof that we discussed last time, you will see that the converse is also true. That means, if there is a saddle point, then v upper bar and v lower bar become equal. So, if v so here, what the way I've written it is that if v upper bar is equal to v lower bar, then there exists a saddle point, and it comprise and the saddle point comprises of security strategies. And the op the opposite result is that if there exists a saddle point. then v upper bar is equal to v lower bar and that is actually equal to a i star j star. If there exists a saddle point i star j star then these are equal ok. Any questions about this? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, a, a saddle point is actually the same as the Nash equilibrium when applied to zero sum games. You can see, in fact, you can see it from the uh, from this inequality here. Each player, as, uh, the way you can you can think of it as a Nash equilibrium, as you can say that assuming the other players plays his star strategy, each player would want to play his own stars, would not want to deviate from his star strategy, right? So, and I, so I'll write this here. So, so the saddle point. is a Nash equilibrium is is basically is equivalent to Nash equilibrium for zero sum games. Now, here is why here is something to uh, just take again sort of take note here. Yeah. See if the saddle the way the saddle point is defined is that it requires you to define that pair. Okay, and in fact, this definition of saddle point is exactly what you encounter when you do calculus, uh, multivariable calculus, uh, you know, optimization saddle points, and so on. Okay, so this is the saddle point requires you to define the pair i star j star. Security strategies could did not require you to concern yourself with what the other player is going to play. Security strategy was just defined as in this in this way. They mean over. The, the i star that minimizes the max over j a i j and the j star that maximizes the min over i of a i j. So, I do not really need to know what the other component of the uh, component is. If I want to find the security strategy, all I have to do is this I do not need the j star to find the i star, and likewise, I do not need the i star to find the j star. Whereas, in a saddle point, a saddle point always is defined with i star j star as a pair together. 
the pair is called a saddle point if this inequality they together need to satisfy these these two inequalities right so so I, so a saddle point in some sense is uh, is is a is a slight is a more demanding concept but a security strategy is something that each player can compute on its own doesn't need the you know i don't need to even take the view of an observer it's just a each player has to just compute a security strategy by you know by its own calculation okay so that is one thing so 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 as far so the security uh, so now the security strategies can be computed by players independently a saddle point is something that is a joint definition okay but when v upper bar is equal to v lower bar the two coincide okay a saddle point comprises of security strategies uh, and uh, and vice versa the uh, that this is this is what happens when v upper bar is equal to v lower bar which means if the game satisfies v upper bar equals v lower bar then in that case players can basically reason about the game sort of in some in some sense independently each player basically just thinks of the worst that could happen and plays and that 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 turns out to be you know zero regret or satisfactory at the end of it all okay unlike in the so since we the reason i brought this up is because uh, uh, the comparison with the nash equilibrium game the nash equilibrium remember ha, is something that is defined as a profile the profile of strategies for the player such that no player has an incentive to deviate so for that the entire profile has to be defined together you cannot define each player's uh, action independently if you go if you go back and think about the deer rabbit game for example i can't think of only one player's strategy as deer and another player's strategy as rabbit and think of those two as separate because then that will not you know i cannot come deer deer is an ash equilibrium there rabbit rabbit is an ash equilibrium but deer rabbit and rabbit deer are not okay so so this is again a peculiar structure of the zero sum game the zero sum game has all these nice properties that you know is essentially because players are this kind of uh, in, are into mortal combat here is that that's the reason why this is happening because they are basically just out to kill each other uh, any gain to one is the, is a, is is uh, is is lost to the other okay so that is why there is this particular uh, all this structure prevails here is another corollary of all this now since a, a saddle point must always comprise of security strategies whenever v upper bar is equal to v lower bar saddle point must comprise of security strategies but as i said security strategies can be computed by each player separately which means these two quantities v upper bar and v lower bar can be computed by each the players separately in other words they are properties of the matrix itself right they are not properties of the specific saddle point necessarily because the saddle point is just a pair that satisfies this whereas these two quantities whenever a saddle point exists its value actually ends up being equal to the v upper bar and v lower bar and these two are actually functions of the matrix which means what does this mean which means all saddle points must have the same value because they are end, they end up being equal to v upper bar and v lower bar right yeah so corollary here is all saddle points have the same value now this is this is in itself significant because what it is saying is that even if there are multiple saddle points to the game it doesn't matter which one you pick the val the value that each player gets is the same regardless of what that saddle points okay again contrast with the deer rabbit game deer deer gave you a different pair of rabbit rabbit gave you a different pair there are two different nash equilibria which gave two different payoffs to both players right on the other hand in a zero sum game once there is a saddle point regard there is one saddle point regardless of uh, what the what the structure of the matrix is once there is a saddle point it has to be that all saddle points will give you the same value provided there exists a saddle point okay 
so which this again simplifies for us uh, you know is a, is a, is uh, as as uh, as observers of the game this tells us this is very useful because it tells us that there is you know i may not be able to predict the saddle point but i can certainly predict what the value each player is going to get yeah i can say something very uh, very definite about what value each player is going to get okay all right so that's that so all saddle points have the same value there is another corollary of the again of what i just wrote on the previous uh, on the previous page now suppose there are two saddle points let's say i1 j1 is a saddle point and i2 j2 is another saddle point so if j1 and i2 j2 are saddle points so these are saddle points now therefore what does this mean every saddle point must comprise of security strategies which means i1 is a security strategy for player 1 i2 is also a security strategy for player 1 j1 is a security strategy for player 2 and j2 is also a security strategy for player 2 but then what did we also say that if there is a saddle point then every pair of security strategies is also a saddle point which means i1 j2 is also a saddle point and i2 j1 is also a saddle point so that is so if they uh, so actually yeah, you have to go back to the previous the the proof that we showed at the end of the last class essentially if there is if v1 equals v2 there is a saddle point and saddle point comprises of security strategy so conversely if if secure if a if a saddle point exists okay then v1 equals v2 and then once v1 equals v2 the the saddle point becomes uh, is comprised of security strategies so every and you put together any pair of security strategies they have to be a saddle point because security strategies give you v1 v upper bar and equal, uh, equal, not v1 v2 what am i saying v upper bar and v lower bar right okay so so if i1 j1 and i2 j2 are saddle points then so are i2 j1 and i1 j2 okay what this means is this is what is called the interchangeability changeability changeability of saddle points what this again means is if see again remember in the deer rabbit game deer deer was an ash equilibrium rabbit rabbit was an ash equilibrium but deer rabbit is not right but in a zero sum game it you see what has happened you can take one player security one player's strategy from a saddle point combine it with another play, the other player strategy from another saddle point and put those together that still remains a saddle point okay this kind of mix and match that you can do here with uh, with uh, you know with player strategies is essentially because a, the way a saddle point is arrived at is because is by both players kind of independently reasoning you are you don't have to define the pair together if the saddle point exists because it comes out from security strategy yes yeah i think that generically it should be possible i don't know if i have a numerical example yeah but you see i mean so simple okay i can all i can give a pathological example i can just repeat this last row so i can just create one more row copy paste this last last row here it should be should, no it would be either row 3 or row 4 yeah well is it the same i mean but here here this is a bad example because there is no saddle point to here to begin with okay here we didn't have v upper bar and v lower but nonetheless i mean just imagine a game where you had a saddle point 
and you just uh, duplicated uh, the row that had the saddle point right you will get uh, or the column that had the saddle point you will get a uh, you will get this particular property. So, uh, mathematically I mean that is of course a very uh, kind of contrived um, contrived example, but in mathematically there could very well be multiple rows that give you the same worst case pair or multiple likewise multiple columns that give the same worst case pair. So, if there is this uh, because of this interchangeability property essentially how to play you know in a, in a zero sum game has a very simple answer. Just if there is if v upper bar is equal to Wheeler or what you need to do is just just play your security strategy and that is it that ok that is the uh, does not and it does not matter whether you uh, whether the other which other which security strategy other guy is going to play you would you would all get you would get the same payoff regardless ok ok. So, so this this is basically the um, uh, let us say where uh, uh, the this is essentially what you can say is you know uh, how you would reason if v upper bar is equal to v lower bar for a zero sum game. 